Hello students. Now we come to the second uh, lesson of the sanctuary class. The second lesson's title is Sanctuary Model from Above or from Around. It will be a very interesting study and we do the vocabulary now. Let's start with a short prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, uh, we are very, very thankful to study the sanctuary class together. And this time we want to think about the model of our sanctuary, whether it came from above or it came from the neighboring nations. Guide our minds this time by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, the first one we want to look at is biblical archaeology. Archaeology is the study of the ancient and recent human past through material remains. Biblical archaeology is an academic school and a subset of biblical studies and Levantine archaeology. It studies archaeological sites from the ancient Near East, and especially the Holy Land, also known as Palestine, land of Israel and Canaan, from biblical times. Here you see the word Levine. Uh, it means the Palestine, like Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan, Israel, that area is called Levant. And biblical archaeology is dealing with the historical remains of the Levant. Syro Palestinian uh, Levantine archaeology is the archaeological study of the Levant. It is also known as Syro Palestinian archaeology or Palestinian archaeology, same term, different words, particularly when the area of inquiry centers on ancient Palestine. Apologetic has basically two meanings. One is regretfully acknowledging or excusing an offense or failure is apology, apologetic, and the other one is of the nature of a formal defense or justification of something such as a theory or religious doctrine. So uh, our church is very apologetic, defending our Christian doctrines. William Albright was an American archaeologist, biblical scholar, philologist, and expert on ceramics, of course, in the archaeology area. Albright became known for his role in the authentication of the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1948, but made his scholarly reputation as the leading theorist and practitioner of biblical archaeology. Um, he was the one who said, there can be no doubt that archaeology has confirmed the substantial historicity of Old Testament tradition. So he stood for the biblical position and he said, archaeology confirmed the historicity of the Old Testament. That's what he tried to do, fighting against the kind of uh, the trend of that time. And he is not an Adventist, but very closely related to Adventist people, scholars. Ancient Near East was the home of early civilizations within a region roughly corresponding to the modern Middle East, that is Mesopotamia, modern Iraq, Turkey, Iran, Syria, and Kuwait, ancient Egypt, ancient Iran, Anatolia, Asia Minor, and the Armenian highlands, Turkey's eastern Anatolia region, Armenia, 
northwestern Iran, southern Georgia, and western Azerbaijan. The Levant, in the ancient Near East, include Levant too, meaning modern Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, and Jordan, Cyprus, and the Arabian Peninsula. All these areas are included in the term ancient Near East of the ancient time. Siegfried Horn was a Seventh-day Adventist archaeologist and Bible scholar. He is best known for his excavations at Heshbon in Jordan and Shechem in the West Bank. He was professor of history of antiquity at the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University, the Siegfried H. Horn Museum at Andrews University, was named in his own honor. If you go to Andrews University, <laughs> there is a supermarket called uh, Apple Valley. And across Apple Valley, there is the Siegfried Horn Museum. Uh, following his name, he is an Adventist, but world famous archaeologist uh, of that time. Uh, very well known among Adventists and worldwide. Here is Siegfried Horn, and next one is a female a scholar, Conning Leona Running. She is teaching uh, Hebrew, maybe, or Hebrew or Aramaic uh, uh, in the class. Leona Running uh, died very recently, relatively recently, right? was the first Seventh-day Adventist woman to earn a Doctor of Philosophy in Ancient Near Eastern Studies at Johns Hopkins University. She was also the first female to join the faculty of the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary in 1955. So she was the first seminary faculty in the history of Adventist Church, while in the Theological Seminary, from 1955 to 2002. Very long teaching there, right? She taught Greek, Hebrew, Egyptian, Akkadian, Syriac, and Aramaic. She was also a research and editorial assistant to W. Albright. She was known as the secretary of Albright, meaning research assistant. So some people say behind Albright, there is Leona Ronin, yeah? very famous uh, scholar, female scholar. William Shea was a physician, professor, and lecturer on archaeology and Bible. He died two years ago, as you can see. He taught for 14 years at Andrews University Theological Seminary before retiring. Before that, he was the assistant director of the Biblical Research Institute at the General Conference of the Adventists in Maryland. He is also a very, very well-known Adventist scholar, Bible scholar and archaeologist, Siegfried Horn, William Shea, and also Tilly, you will see him soon and also the other scholars in archaeology area, they are all very, very famous Adventist scholars in the area of archaeology. Heshbon excavation. Ancient Heshbon was beyond, that is, east of Jordan. The city was where the, the Israelites passed by on their entry to the promised land and was assigned to the tribe of Reuben. Heshbon is mentioned as the capital of Amorite king Sihon. In 1968, archaeological excavations were undertaken at the site of Tel Heshbon, that is Heshbon Expedition, sponsored by Andrews University and under the authority of Azor. Azor means uh, Association School of Oriental Research, 
uh, I, I have to check very carefully, but School of Oriental Research, that is correct. School of Oriental Research, maybe association. Yeah. Through 1976, it continued in 1996 under the Madaba Plains Project. So Andrews was the leading institution uh, for these projects like Ashburn Project and Madaba Plains Project and Azor supported Andrews University for their excavation and study. William Deaver is an American archaeologist, Old Testament scholar and historian specialized in the history of the ancient Near East and the ancient kingdoms of Israel and Judah in biblical times. He was professor of Near Eastern Archaeology and Anthropology at the University of Arizona in Tucson from this time until 2002. He is a distinguished professor of Near Eastern Archaeology at Lecoming College in Pennsylvania currently. We may say he is the world famous renowned archaeologist of the current time, probably the world best, world primary uh, archaeologist of our time. Yeah, next term is new archaeology. Processual archaeology was an intellectual movement of the 1960s, known then as the new archaeology, which advocated logical positivism as a guiding research philosophy modeled on the scientific method, something that had never been applied to archaeology before. We talked about uh, William Deaver. Uh, he teaches the biblical history, that kind of thing, Old Testament scholar, but he is not in the believing position. He rather follows the new theology tradition and considering uh, the biblical texts as just part of the study material rather than trying to uh, kind of prove the Bible is true, but he doesn't follow that kind of um, direction. Now we come Julius Wellhausen. Julius Wellhausen, born 1844, Almost the same time of Ellen White, right? Ellen White died in 1915. He died in 1918. Was a German biblical scholar and orientalist. Wellhausen contributed to the composition history of the Pentateuch, that is Torah, and studied the formative period of Islam. For the former, meaning the Torah study, he is credited as one of the originators of the documentary hypothesis of JEDP sources. I, I believe you heard about JEDP source. Yahwist, Elohim, this is Deuteronomy, and this is the Pentateuch. Uh, that kind of different, um, they put uh, different periods for the Torah writing as sources. So they don't believe that Moses wrote, wrote the Pentateuch, but they think there were these different sources and the editor kind of collected these sources and edited, that is the Bible. That's the basic idea about uh, the documentary hypothesis of JEDP theory. Here, this picture shows briefly uh, what JEDP uh, tells you. Whether there is one Moses or there are four Moseses, right? JEDP, different Moses, meaning not Moses wrote the Pentateuch, but the Pentateuch came from the sources of JEDP.
Yeah. Interesting representing, well summarizing the hypothesis. Now, Hermann Gunkel. Hermann Gunkel, a German Old Testament scholar, founded, from, founded form criticism. He also became a leading representative of the history of religious school. His major works cover Genesis and the Psalms, and his major interests centered on the oral tradition behind written sources and in folklore. Uh, here you read history of religion school, right? History of religion school. What they say is Israelite religion borrowed from the near, nearing neighboring cultures, their texts and their ideas. That's the history of religion school. Of course, we don't go for it. Or we don't buy that idea. Yugarit is an ancient city lying in a large artificial mound called Ras Shamra, Ras Shamra, six miles north of Latakia of northern Syria. The, its excavation began in 1929, the most prosperous age in Ugarit history dated from about 1450 to about 1200 BC. Many texts discovered at Ugarit, including the legend of Keret, the Akkad epic, the myth of Baal Alian, that is Baal myth, the death of Baal reveal an old Canaanite mythology. These texts have an important relation to biblical studies. Yeah, Ugaritic texts are very important in biblical studies, but the Bible scholars in these days, many of them, most of them, are saying is Israelite culture and text and ideas and thought came from the Canaanite, Canaanite uh, ideas. They borrowed and copied Canaanite texts and Canaanite ideas. Uh, that's what the people, I mean the biblical scholars are thinking these days. But as you can see, they were in the period between 1450 to 1200 BCE. And the Exodus, in reality, the Exodus happened before 1200. Exodus was about this time, right? So uh, we may argue Exodus was first before the Ugaritic texts. Of course, those who believe in this theory says, no, no, Bible was written later. Therefore, Bible was copied from Ugaritic texts. But if you truly believe in the uh, chronology, biblical chronology, then you can claim, no, no, these are later. Bible texts were first, before this time. Okay. That's the difference that we have. Higher criticism, historical criticism, also known as the historical critical method, or higher criticism, is a branch of criticism that investigates the origins of ancient, especially biblical texts, in order to understand the world behind the text. Its primary goal is set to discover the text's primitive or original meaning in its original historical context and its literal sense. The secondary goal seeks to establish a reconstruction of the historical situation of the author and recipients of the text. Of course, in higher criticism, they don't believe um, for example, Moses wrote uh, Pentateuch and there was an, a real exodus they don't believe. And also they don't believe pro 
probably we can say God created the world and they uh, try to find out the history real they as they say the real history behind the text but we believe the biblical history is the genuine real history different from higher critical view Edwin Dilley was an American Seventh-day Adventist missionary in China and editor, archaeologist, writer, and Old Testament professor. He is best known for his chronological studies of the kingdoms of Judah and Israel, thus called the Dean of Chronology. He, his chronology is still very well um, studied among biblical scholars all over the world. Dean of Chronology. Now we come to late Bronze Age. The Bronze <coughs> sorry, Age is a historic period approximately 3300 BCE to 1200 BCE that was characterized by the use of bronze. In some areas, proto-writing and other early features of urban civilization. The Bronze Age is the second principal period of the three, meaning the Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron System. In a matter of decades, though, that thriving culture underwent the rapid and near total collapse after 1177 BCE. The late Bronze Age suddenly was destroyed around this time. Okay, so it is this time, this period. So it's um, right before King, like two hundred years before the Kingdom of Israel, right? Saul and David, time. Yeah. Tell, in archaeology, a tell. Spelling is different. It is an artificial topographical feature, a species of mound consisting of the accumulated and stratified debris of a succession of consecutive settlements at the same site. The refuse of generations of people who built and inhabited them and of natural sediment. Um, the next picture will show what is tell. You see a mound here, and it is the site of consecutive settlement uh, throughout uh, different periods of time. So as you can see here, it has layers representing different time period, and it became a mound. And the archaeologists dig this tell and they find out uh, in each uh, layer what is there and they study and try to find out um, the archaeological meanings of the findings. Lawrence Geraty, another famous Adventist archaeologist, uh, is an American academic who served as the second president of La Sierra University. He received a doctorate in biblical studies from Harvard University. He has also served as president of the American, uh, A is American, American School of Oriental Research Organization. Very, very famous archaeology um, uh, association, scholars association and also taught archaeology and religion at Andrews University. He authored Heshbon 1976, the fifth campaign at Tel Heshbon, and also edited Madaba Plains Project, the 1984 season at Tel El Umeri in vicinity and subsequent studies. It was in 1989, and he continued producing and editing the series even afterwards in 2002. Uh, Lawrence Geraghty. The last one is Larry Hare. Uh, 
Lawrence Geraghty was from 1944-1940. Larry Hare was born in 1946. He is a religious studies professor and archaeologist. He received his Ph.D. from Harvard in 1977 in the field of Near Eastern Languages and Literatures. He is the field director emeritus of the Dick at Umeri, Jordan, and is now one of the directors of the Madaba Plains Project in Jordan. He is a professor of religious studies at Canadian University College. He edited the Madaba Plains Project, 40 Years of Archaeological Research into Jordan's Past, published in 2016 with other scholars. Mary Hare, Lawrence Geraghty. This one is Lawrence Geraghty, and he is Larry Hare. They were talking together uh, at La Sierra University. Probably the president of La Sierra is introducing him for something, maybe. Okay, so we looked at um, some 20 related vocabulary on the second lesson of sanctuary from above or from around in relation with the sanctuary model. Because of the nature of study, we thought about many vocabulary related to archaeology. Okay, thank you so much for your careful listening and have a very happy Sabbath. And remember, today is the last day before sunset of submitting your um, assignment to E-class and meaning Friday, uh, March 11. And we will see you on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Thank you so much.